Now, what does this mean? This verse in Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, is an interesting verse, and I just want to read this to you. Um, and some people have said that this verse is actually kind of a, um, well, it's an error in the New Testament, that Jesus actually got this wrong. Okay? It says, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. Uh, this is just after the passage where Jesus says, you know, for whoever wants to save his life must lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. And uh, what will be good for a man if he gains the whole world, yet he forfeits his soul? Okay? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according... How will he reward each person? According to what he has done. According to what he has done. Very interesting. The emphasis here. I tell you the truth. Now he says this. Some of you who are standing here will not taste of death before you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Some of you standing here will not taste of death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so he's saying to some of them, now some of the writers then, uh, have problems with this, and uh, what does this mean, this, that some of you will not face death until you see the coming of his kingdom? Uh, some writers say that Jesus got it wrong. He missed it, they died, he didn't come back. And so this was a, a major tragedy in the early church. Jesus had told them he was coming back before they would die. They died. He never showed up. And so this is one of the, you know, Jesus missed it. And the disciples, then it's one of the, the uh, dissonant features in the early churches. They're saying, oh, what happened here? Jesus didn't come back. Jesus didn't come back. And so then they have to make up all this theology. That's what some people would say. Others, I think, there are other solutions to this. And I think uh, basically three that I think are, are plausible. One is the spread of the gospel. That some of you will, will see the man, Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That is, through the preaching of the gospel, they would see the establishment of the kingdom of God in its already-ness on the earth uh, through the spread of the gospel. The book of Acts, the Pentecost, the spreading of the gospel through the Apostle Paul and the various missionary journeys and things like that in the book of Acts. And so the spread of the gospel was be one aspect of that. Um, and then, let me just jump down to the next one. Uh, resurrection. It's, that some people think that this has to do with the resurrection and ascension. The resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Now, how is the resurrection separate from the ascension? The resurrection happens, Jesus dies on the cross, and then three days later, Jesus rises from the dead. And so on Sunday, that's what we celebrate the Lord's Day. On Sunday, uh, they go to the tomb and Jesus is risen from the dead. That's the resurrection. Jesus died, he comes back to life, that's the resurrection. The ascension doesn't happen. Now that was right around Passover time. Passover. About 50 days later, they celebrate Pentecost. Penta, meaning five. 50 days later, they celebrate Pentecost. And this is the Feast of Pentecost, becomes uh, the Pentecostal experience in Acts chapter 2. And just in Acts chapter 1, then, it describes Jesus basically going up and ascending back up into heaven on a cloud, and kind of riding a cloud and up into heaven. That's the ascension. So you have the resurrection, and then about 50 days later, you have the ascension, where Jesus goes up uh, to heaven. 40 days later, 50 days later, something like that. So the resurrection and ascension, so some people who saw Christ coming in his kingdom saw the resurrected Lord. And when they saw the resurrected and ascension of Jesus, that this was the coming of the kingdom, they got to see uh, those aspects of the kingdom that Jesus is possibly referring to here. Now, in my classes, you, you, you know, I've got one thing that I emphasize a lot, and that is context determines meaning, not etymology. Not etymology, a history of a word, but the context determines meaning. So when I come up with a verse like this that has some difficulty, you know, what does it mean? The son, you know, some of you won't die until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You've got to look at the context. Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, is the last verse of chapter 16. I think we've already mentioned this in this class. By the way, are the chapter divisions original in the Bible? And the answer is no. The chapter divisions were added in the 12th, about 13th century, about 1200 A.D., the, the chapter divisions, and it was done by a bishop, and Dr. McRae, who tells these stories uh, 
Now, some people think McCray actually lived back then, but this guy, Dr. McCray, was born right around the 1900s. And um, Dr. McCray tells about the bishop going to put the chapters in the Bible around 1200, and he was riding on a horse, and sometimes the horse would surge forward, and sometimes the horse would surge backward, and the, the, the person then, the bishop who was making the chapter divisions then missed. And so a lot of times you've got to be careful with the chapter divisions. Whenever you study a chapter, always study a few verses before and a few verses afterwards to see whether the chapter division itself is in the right place. That was made in the 12th, 13th century by a bishop, and a lot of times he was wrong, okay, in terms of where he made the chapter division. But anyways, going back to this, chapter 1628, see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Uh, that's the last verse of chapter 16. How does chapter 17 start? Chapter 17 starts with the transfiguration. Starts with the transfiguration. So some of you, notice he says some of you. He doesn't say all of you. He says some of you are going to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And some people, and then boom, right next to, after he says that, then you've got the transfiguration. And so from the context, some people, including myself, would suggest it may be the transfiguration that he's referring to here. That they would see the Son of Man transfigured, Moses and Elijah representing the kind of the other kingdom, him and his transfiguration body uh, representing this, uh, the, the, the kingdom that is to come. And so these uh, three disciples, Peter, James, and John, have insight then, or they get to see some of the kingdom as envisioned in, in uh, Jesus and Moses and Elijah that appeared transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration. So this verse... Uh, Three ways of looking at this and, and responding in terms of this kingdom thing. The already but not yet aspects of it. So it's already within you, but yet it still is to come. And so all I'm trying to say here is that the kingdom of heaven is not a, a simple concept. It's actually a complex concept. And it, there's various nuances to it. And therefore you've got to understand the alreadiness to it. It's already here in various forms, but then you also have to understand that it is yet to come. And it's yet to come form also has various nuances as well. And so you've got, uh, it's a complex thing, and it's a kind of a tension. If you emphasize too much the alreadiness, the kingdom is here, the kingdom is within you, and you mention the, the, the alreadiness of the kingdom and you ignore the not yet, you're, you're missing a lot of the hope that is to come. On the other hand, you've got other people, so some people emphasize the alreadiness of the kingdom and ignore the not yet part. And those people then uh, will have problems because they're not biblical. As well as then you've got other people who, who emphasize the not yet aspect. And so they write books and they read all these things on you know the kingdom that's coming and when he's going to come and how he's going to come and, and all this kind of thing and trying to figure out the days and the hours and things. And they're always focused on the already uh, the not yet side of it. And those people also, too, I think are misguided. And I think there needs to be this tension between the already and the not yet, where both are embraced and held on to and balanced off of each other. So 